it changes the economies, mental states. Understand? All of the mental states within your Sankara, these are Cheta Seka. And they are nothing special. It's only the Abhidhamma try to put it into a very like different expression in a Pali sense. Then people get excited by this word. So Cheta Sika are actually your mental concomitant. All of the mental states within your mind states. And when you develop the cultivation, once you have the stability of mindfulness, you can see them. That's why your mind becomes different. Your mind becomes sensitive when you are mindful. Then when you can see them, you know these are cheta seekers within. That's why in the, uh, what they call Abhidharma teaching, there is this part they call the content of consciousness or cheta sikha, which is mental concomitant. He said, in every consciousness, there are seven universal. You heard of these seven universal, isn't it? Universal. So the seven universal means these are the seven cheta sikhas that are common to all consciousness. Seven universal. So these are the seven cheta sikhas common to or consciousness because they are universal so all consciousness must have this for it to arise and these seven we have gone through one of them is contact the other one is feeling then perception then you have what they call ekagata one pointedness then, then the other, other one, one is, is attention, attention, I think, manasikara. Yeah. That's why you only saw manasikara is the wisdom at the moment of attention, manasikara. Then they have the life, uh, life stream or energy, jatrivina or the no one, is a pali one. So all these seven universes, they are common to all consciousness. For consciousness to arrive, they must have. Yeah. So the so consciousness the without the content, this seven universal is not there yet. But the moment you input the content, this seven must be there. Yeah. So the only thing that is there before the content went in is contact. Because when there is contact, the pure consciousness, the vijnana can arise. Then they input the content, the sankara all go in. Then the then feeling, feeling, perception, perception and, and all the other, other things, things, they will go in. in. Then, then wholesome, wholesome, unwholesome, and, and all this, they will they come will in. Come in. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this, this word, word is another word for mental states, states. Mental, mental concomitant. Everything, everything that your mind, the mundane mind, can transform into. So when you develop it through meditation, then this cheta sika is what you have to look for. Where when you are mindful, you have the stability of daily mindfulness and awareness. Where in your daily life, when your mind reacts and stir, all these cheta sika will arise. That's why under citta nupasana, you will have to see all this, the content of consciousness. The consciousness that have greed, that have fear, that have envy, jealousy, that have all the various state of mind, you must aware. So, like, the consciousness is spacious. Going, experiencing pity, sukha, you must be aware. These are the cetasikas. 
the mental states within. Uh, then this one is an expanding consciousness. You will have to be aware, spacious awareness or whatever. Then the Chetasikha are the mind state that is inside, whether it's peaceful, whether it's tranquil, still, joy, pity and all those things. Or whether there is envy, jealousy, fear, worry, anxiety, phobia. Uh, so all these are, they call Chetasika. And according to Abhidhamma, there are 52 of these mind states. And these 52, they include the first two mind aggregate of feeling and perception, Vedana and Sanya. So if you take that two away, then the rest of Chetasika is 50. Yeah. So in the sense that is related to meditation is because you get to be mindful of this mind state. You have to be mindful of this mind state. Then like the Buddha's explanation, when this mind state arises, means you know your mind has stirred. It has become like that. Then if your mind has not stirred, it will develop the tranquility state, the stillness state, the silence, the pity, the sukha, or the what they call wholesome mind state. That's why you got wholesome and unwholesome, kusala and akusala. Yeah. Then you also have the neutral feeling, indifferent and all those things. Mm. Then this one subdivide the mind state into many, many more uh, Many, many, many more description. Yeah. They describe it in more detail so that you can have the various understanding of it. If you want to know most of the mind state, you have to go into this, what they call, if I'm not wrong, is Salika Sutta. Salika Sutta. Where the Buddha subdivide all of the possible mind state into a total of 45, if I'm not wrong, 45. So under that one, you, you, you can read through them also, uh, under Salika Sutta. Mm. So basically, it's nothing very special, except people find it very like, interesting. Because this word is seldom taught or seldom discussed. Because it's an Abhidhamma word. Abhidhamma is the three basket, the higher teaching. First, you have the vinyana, uh, vinaya. Vinaya means the monk's precepts. Means the patimokha part, yeah? the vinaya part, the discipline of the monks. Then you have the sutta, the second basket. The sutta is all the discourse of the Buddha. Then the third basket is Abhidhamma. They call it the higher teaching. So in the Abhidhamma, they go deeper into consciousness. Uh, they go much more deeper. They classify all the various type of consciousness. Then they got the consciousness for lay people. Then they got the consciousness for enlightened being. Supramundane consciousness and all those things. Mm the various classification. But as far as my nature is concerned, because in the early day, when people come to see me and ask me this topic, I say, I don't know, because I never read the Vedama. Then later on, I managed to get hold of this Abhidhamma book. I think, uh, many years later after I graduate from MU. Huh? And somebody gave me <coughs> one book, which is quite good, from, by Narada. Yeah, also by Narada, huh? Venerable Narada. I think it's something to do with Abhidhamma. I don't know, a compodium of Abhidhamma, I don't know what, I forgot already. Yeah. Then I flicked through that book after 1989 when my nature understood. Then I saw the thing so interesting. 
But I say all this cannot be understood by the unenlightened being. These are all theory and knowledge. And these words is not easy for people to understand. But if you have already awakened and transformed, then you read, then you understand what they are trying to tell you. Then in fact, a lot of the translations are not correct. Not correct. The actual happening is not like that. Yeah. But they try their very best to subdivide. I think in the olden days, they, they have this teaching, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Then they try to use words to describe them. Yeah. But quite a number of the things that they said is quite true. Yeah, quite true. Like they mentioned... Uh, You see, when consciousness arises, yeah, they always ask this question, which one arises first? Perception first? Or feeling first? Yeah. Then last time there is one Singaporean, I remember, he go and ask the mother. He said, at the moment of consciousness, uh, when I see, uh, do I see the color first? Or the, or the shape, shape first, first, or the, or the thought, thought about, about that thing. thing. The monk doesn't know how to understand him. Yeah. But actually but all this is, you cannot understand. Because, because the, the mind, mind moves very fast. fast. At, the, At moment the moment of consciousness, like, like the physics experiment, the light bulb light up. You remember? The light bulb light up means the mind, the true mind is conscious. Just aware. That is the pure awareness, pure consciousness, without the content. But the moment you input your content, it's very far. He went in. That's why these seven universal, they arise simultaneously. Simultaneously, upon contact you input the content. All this went in together with the other Chetasika, whether wholesome or unwholesome, kusala or akusala. It all, it all simultaneously, simultaneously arises. Then, then your, your mind, mind decides. You can you be at the at moment the of feeling, feeling, at the at moment the of contact, contact, at the at moment the of Sankara activity, activity movement. movement. And which, which one you want, you want to go to is up to you. you. That's why the so monk cannot understand him, because his mindfulness is not so stable. He has not reached that stage. But when you reach that stage, you can answer him. It's not what you think. You are speculating with your thought. But the actual the happening is that mindfulness that is aware can be at the moment, anywhere. But it can only be at the moment of one of these chetasika at a time. But it can move very fast. It can just silence everything and be aware of the whole content. Yeah. So this is the power of mind, power of mindfulness. And this is how mindfulness is very important. Without mindfulness, you cannot have that type of sensitivity, the ability to be aware, to understand all this. So Abhidhamma, to me, is like Mahayana teaching. It's written for enlightened beings. <laughs> so if you are not enlightened, you read, you cannot understand, you only interpret them. That's why you need to develop the cultivation. When you have the cultivation, when you have the transformation, the understanding, then your mind functions differently. And you can see all this very clearly. And then whatever is written, you can have a clearer understanding of what that thing is. Then what is written wrongly also you will know. Uh, so is it clear? Uh, so it's not a new word. It's just a Pali word that a lot of people may not understand. So the so English, English rendering, rendering is mental, mental concomitant. concomitant. Yeah. 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 But it's actually yeah. all your yeah. various yeah. Sankara mind states. Yeah. Yeah. That is within the content of consciousness. consciousness.